Hello and welcome to episode 3, season 1 of my Factorial 1.1 tutorial series. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me again for this episode. Uh, today we will be covering a beginner tutorial on setting up your first steam power build. Uh, now after you go through your burner stage of the game, which we covered last episode, uh, the next logical step is going to be to set up power. Of course, you will need power to transition further into the game and get assembling machines, etc. Um, so setting up steam power is going to be very important. I know initially it can be maybe a little confusing or overwhelming. So let's hop right into it here. The first thing before we even discuss the power itself, uh, I just want to mention if you have, if your game looks like this, uh, where all the things are blank, all the machines and entities are blank, I recommend turning on your advanced info with alt and it will start looking something like this. And uh, alt is the default hot, hot key. Basically what this does is this will show you inputs and outputs and statuses of uh, machines and entities uh, and such like that. So without that on, it's very confusing uh, to see where things are, what's going in where, and what's going out where. If you mouse over it, it will show you that, but if you don't, it's very unclear. And unfortunately, that is the default mode, is this. So if you turn this on, it's going to make things a lot easier for you, and obviously much easier for uh, explaining in this video. So the power itself, how does it work? Well, it's very straightforward, very logical, uh, similar, I believe, to uh, real life, maybe slightly simplified. Uh, but essentially, we are taking water, which our offshore pump here is providing, uh, sending it into boilers, which then take fuel and he heat up the water to then generate steam, which is then sent into the steam engines, and the steam turns the turbines and engines within this to generate power. Pretty straightforward. Uh, now, in-game, there are some ratios that are going to make this uh, work very well, or if you don't follow them, uh, not as well. Now, I'm not saying you have to follow them. Uh, you're welcome to play and build however you would like. And I like to encourage that. However, I think it will make your life easier if you do follow these ratios, and it will just make things run a bit smoother for you. Uh, so let's discuss really quickly how this works. You can visually see, uh, but we are sending water in one end of this boiler, and it can pass through the boiler, so that's very important. Uh, you don't actually need pipes in between the boilers or anything like that. They, it's just the water passes straight through it, and then it outputs steam up top here on this end. Uh, this, of course, can be rotated, as you can see. It just passes steam out the other end that water does not travel through, and then you can hook your steam engines directly to that. Again, no pipes are required. You will notice some pipes in this build, which I'll discuss uh, a little later, but this is purely for spacing reasons. Uh, and that's very simple, very straightforward. So ratios, uh, what ratios do we have here? Well, we have this setup, which I built, which is a perfect ratio, meaning that even at full consumption, if you're just consuming all the power this can generate, this will work exactly as it should and things won't be bogged down or starved of, you know, whatever they may need. So we have one offshore pump, 20 boilers here, we count these with this 20 boilers and then 40 steam engines because we have two steam engines off of each boiler uh, now why is this ratio what why is this a thing well you can actually figure this out quite simply by looking at the numbers that the game provides in the tool tips again this may be overwhelming or confusing at first so we'll just quickly discuss them if we look over here at the boilers first we can see on the right hand side in the middle there it consumes 60 water a second. Uh, currently it's zero because it's full, it's not filling itself up, but it will consume a maximum of 60 a second. And then it has 100% efficiency, so it will output 60 steam a second at 165 degrees. You can see down there at the bottom. Uh, these steam engines consume 30 steam a second. And simple math, uh, 30 goes into 60 two times, so if this is outputting 60 steam and each one of these consumes 30, one boiler can exactly output enough steam for both steam engines that are attached to it here. So this is how we get the uh, two steam engines to each boiler set up here. And you don't have to set it up exactly like this, you know, as long as in some form you have that ratio, it should work unless you're doing something very convoluted. Uh, but why do we only have 20 boilers? You know, why, why do we not have 25 or, or, or anything like that? Well, it's due to the offshore pump. The offshore pump, again, just looking at those numbers, it supplies us on the right there, 
outputs 1200 water a second. These boilers, if you recall, recall, consume 60 water a second. 60 goes into 1200 20 times. So one offshore pump can support a maximum of 20 boilers. That's why we don't have more. Uh, you certainly can build less and that's completely fine. It will work absolutely fine all the way up to 20 boilers. Anything past 20, this pump just simply won't be able to output enough water. And you probably won't build something this large right when you start building your setup. Uh, you may just do one boiler and two engines or two boilers and four engines, and that'll work fine. Uh, but you don't want to be going over 20 unless you're adding additional pumps, which again, can get a little convoluted. It can be done. I've seen it be done with 40 boilers and then two pumps supplying it. You may run into some throughput issues elsewhere. So I would recommend sticking to this, but there are other options um, if you want to go that, that route. Uh, now, this is not currently accepting fuel uh, because I actually have the miners turned off and that's on purpose. Uh, I'm going to connect this power pole really quickly and then I'm going to jumpstart this by inserting coal. And if you recall in episode one, we covered hotkeys. Um, if I control right click, I'm going to put half a stack of coal in each of these. And this will jump start it. And I'm using a very special kind of inserter. I'm using burner inserters. This is the first inserter you can build. Uh, it, you know, you do have access to normal ones, which will work. However, burner inserters I prefer because they're unique in the fact that they can actually fuel themselves and they do not require power. Uh, you can see there is no power actually being provided to these inserters. Uh, they will simply grab a fuel. Uh, if they're unfueled like they are, they will grab a fuel that passes by them, feed themselves, and then once they're fueled, they will start feeding you know, anything that, that they're attached to essentially. And this is really ni nice if you have a blackout or power disconnect and you run out of coal for some reason, or you just simply run out of coal. Uh, then if you're using normal inserters and you don't have any power, they can't even jumpstart themselves because there's no power for the inserters to feed themselves, you know, as you can see, um, these inserters just fed themselves and are now outputting coal, even with no power attached to them. So I do like using these. It's just a safer bet and technically they are cheaper as well to craft if that is important. So just want to kind of demonstrate how that works. These guys pick up fuel, feed themselves and off they go. Uh, this is just an alternative setup for you. Uh, the reason I have pipes in here is simply for power pole spacing. Unfortunately, with a small power pole, which is all you have for a little while in the game, you can't actually reach the steam engines through like through the boiler. You can see the power supply there, that that uh, kind of bluish supply box. Um, it won't actually reach the steam engines. Um, if we did not have these pipes and these were all just connected directly together, there would be no way for us to fuel basically this entire row of steam engines here. We could fuel the back ones because we can put behind them. Uh, but we cannot fuel these. So spacing them like this allows us to put power poles here. This is just an alternative setup for you. If you don't want to do that, you can do uh, basically a pipe between every two boilers and do it like this. There's other ways you could do that, but finding some way to actually provide power to all your steam engines is going to be very important. Uh, now, the last thing I would like to touch on for this episode uh, is the boilers in steam engines will basically... Um, they will limit themselves and tune themselves to the amount of power you're consuming. Um, so you can see I'm consuming very little power. I, I'm, I only have a few miners working right now. And uh, you can see this is only consuming 1.2 steam a second out of the maximum 30. And this is only, uh, you know, basically producing 2.4 steam a second out of the maximum 60. So these will kind of ratio themselves in that sense where if you're not using maximum power, um, they will, you know, only use the amount of fuel required to generate the amount of steam or power that's required. You can see that this is barely consuming fuel. If we were at full consumption, this would just be cranking through it. So that is something to take note of. That's very nice that they will kind of just auto tune themselves. Uh, but then of course, if your power consumption does go up, they will respond to that. And there you go. That is the tutorial. I hope that was helpful to you. And uh, I tried to keep it short and to the point as much as I could while still explaining everything. I hope that maybe makes a little more sense to you and can help you get your first steam power setup started. And if you need power past this, it is as simple as just building multiple of these if you would like, or you could add on to it if you make sure to add another offshore pump and get both piped in correctly. 
And there you go. That is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed and found it helpful. I would love to hear your thoughts and comments down below and feedback. And if you have any alternative power setups that work uh, with Steam Power, I'd be interested in hearing those as well. If you did enjoy it, a like is much appreciated. It helps other people find the video. And if you're new to the channel or unsubscribed, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you can be notified when new videos and episodes come out on my channel. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you and take care.